Good day, everyone. Today, we are talking about a net review and exponents. Objectives are finish review to do our A net test, exponents, exponential review, and we have time if and only if. We will talk about parent functions a little bit. <laughs> Today, type of instruction is type B. Type B is student centered. This does not mean that you could chill and do nothing, you still have what to do. Teachers walking around and monitoring. Monitoring and enforcing rules. Teacher will provide the video type instructions such as map nation, such as a video version of the lesson, what have you. In this particular type of instruction, students are put in groups of five at most. So no more than five people per group. Guys, when we are in type B, this is what I'm looking for. Students to ask each other questions and explain the concepts. So that means when we are doing group assignments and such things like that, all I'm looking for is seeing, okay, are you talking to your people? Are you really engaged in terms of understanding the material versus, okay, I got it, okay, I got it. All right. Students are not distracted, so when I'm walking around, if I see phones, of course, I would just deduct points. If I hear any sidebar conversations, I may just say, hey, keep your sidebar to a minimum. But when we come to a point, I may deduct points from there. All right? I'm also looking for students to use their notes from previous classes and acquiring classes. Students using prior learning, stuff that I have taught you already, and you're just talking to me about it. And you're just calling it, not just talking to me, but talking to everyone else. All right? Students are respecting each other's abilities. Yeah, please don't call each other dumb. Don't do any of that. We are all have different types of mathematical levels. You know? So some people may say something, but don't get mad at them for saying something. All right? Because, again, this is a class. It's all about building confidence and you laughing at them. That's just going to tear down their confidence. And, of course, I'm going to punish you, punish you if you do such things like that. Last, and most importantly, the mathematical etiquette. Proper math language. And I'm going to talk to you about that. etiquette here's a rule do not say this when we are working is this right I can't help you when you say those words because it's not you really talk to me about what you could deliver instead say I did a problem what do you think of it what do you think of my work it should say what do you think of my work that how I get clued then like okay let's see what's up I could help you that way don't say I don't get it I'm lost I'm confused instead say I don't understand this part you just did or what else, what have you I don't understand because all right, so don't say I don't understand, I don't get it, I'm lost. Give me an explanation of why. I'm always going to be asking for the explanation when you say it. All right? Don't say you're wrong when you're working with the person. Say, I disagree because, you know, give them a reason. 
be sure that you get credit of each student's work when we critique it and ask for questions to your peers before me. So before you ask, come to me, talk to someone first. I should not be the first person you should go to. All right? Ain't that and it's important. Ain't that it's, it's a grade. It can hurt you academically. This is indeed a quiz grade. Due to its easy nature, however, it is worth 100 points. It's not really hard. It's pretty easy. Because we reviewed the material, so it shouldn't be a problem for none of us. We will spend one day in class, no more than that, doing a net. If you're not here when we take a net, you're going to have to, you know, do that some other time. However, if it's not taken, it's a zero, and it will hurt you. We will take a net on Wednesday or Thursday. Wednesday and Thursday. B day is, is more ahead of A day, so B day should have under the should be fine by then. You can be written up if you fail to take the A net test. So if we'll do an A net in the classroom, if you decide decide not to do it, not to turn it in, I'm writing you up. Because A net is really important. Alright? I will not waste time on A net. I'm not chasing kids down for two weeks straight about take your A net, take your A net. No. I will report to it and we're going to handle it from there. Because we got other things to teach and we got to worry about the ACT. Alright, before I continue, I do want to say this. ACT. You guys are required to take it. It is part of my grade book. If you do not take the ACT in this time by April, that's a chunk of your grade, so you have to take it. Take it seriously and prepare for it. Moving on. Y'all, last week in class, we did exponents. Eight of students did. We reviewed first semester stuff, which was on, which is on ANET. And also, we started on Project 3. So before I move on, let me touch up on exponents right quick. So, in the very beginning, of the semester. I told you that the square root of x can be rewritten as x to a half power. That is what I taught you to do. Well, that's what I told you because that is part of the exponent laws. All right? So let's keep going. But last week, we worked with an exponent that looks like this. So this is the radical. And now we got to rewrite it in the exponential form. To do that, we take the base, which is 5, and we we, we write it in the exponential form because you have the 3 from the radical that 3 serves as the denominator of the exponent so this will be 1 third alright now I'll give you a quick example what if I was to say, well, if I, if I give you 5 and 1 fourth, that's the exponential form. How will I write this in radical form? Well, the 4 is in the denominator, right? 
So when I write the radical, the 4 is going to be right there. And then the 5 being the base is going to be inside the radical. Right? So now, one more little example, then we can move on. So, if I have something that looks like this. I got to take this because it's both radical and it has an exponent. So I got to rewrite it simply in the, well, I got to simplify it into the exponent. So I'm going to simplify it to the exponent because it's in radical form. I want only exponents. So to do that, we're going to rewrite 2. Anytime you see that square root by itself in the inside the parentheses, like here, that's always understood to be a half power. All right? And since we know, now let's work the outside piece. Now since we know we have parentheses us away from the 3, we're going to take 3 and we know to multiply. So 1 half times 3. Well, remember how to multiply a whole number? Well, fresh by a whole number? 1 half times Take the 3 and rewrite it as refresher because every number can be a refresher and multiply across. 1 times 3 is 3, and then 2 times 1 is 2. So my final answer should be what well, is 2 3 halves. Alright. So, what if I have an exponent? Oh. 2 to the power of 5, 6. And I'm trying to write it in radical form. To do that, Draw yourself a radical. As I told you before, the 6 is the denominator. So the 6 is going to go right here. 2 is going to be right in the inside of the radical. And 5 is going to be written right like that. Because the numerator is going to go right here. Always. And the denominator is going to go right here. Alright, so just remember, when you have a radical with an exponent in the front and the back, you gotta rewrite it as this, x, what's in the back is the numerator, what's in the front is the denominator. And that's pretty much, that's how we did it, 8a. Alright. Alright. Now the ACT information. Earlier I told you there's a requirement for us to take it. Alright. So look. All the stuff that we've been doing throughout the school year is going to help us prepare for the ACT. Because there are some topics that is being taught currently in Algebra 2 that you definitely will see. Alright? I know some of you are going to be like, it was now I know when I talked to ACT. You must have not paid attention because these topics are there. Alright? So again, we're going to take the ACT in March. So it's imperative for us to do everything 
and this is for the school. And don't forget, we have Desmos on the ACT of March. In the ACT practice, at the end of the month, we're going to be doing it January 31st and February 1st. Those are the days where we're going to take the practice ACT. Again, it's imperative for you guys to do best on your ACT because your ACT is a grade. I will have a form. I will have to type all that out. Okay? Polynomials and trivia review. At this moment, through the lesson, electrons shouldn't be out. No sidebars. Failure to comply will result to zero. So talk to me. Five is what type of number? It's an integer. And what letter do we use to describe, to denote the integer? Z. Plus or minus. But we use Z to talk about positive, to talk about integer. So 3 plus 5i, what type of number is that? It is complex. And what letter do we use to describe complex? C. All right. Remember, a complex number has a real number and an imaginary number. So it had two pieces. Eight ninth is what type of number? You can't say the word fraction. We don't do that. Rational number. What letter do we use to use rational? Q. That's right. Because Q is rational. Can 3 plus 5 be any other type of number? It's plain. Well, no, only complex. What could become, well, you could say it's only complex because it can't be real because it has an imaginary, imaginary part of it. Any number that has an imaginary piece to it is complex. So, if you want to, you could say complex and imaginary. Are those those things are redundant, but they are both complex and imaginary. Keep that in mind. Those are just facts that you may need to be fully aware of for your ANET. All right, can seven be another type of number? Yes. Why? Because seven is an integer. It's a rational number, and it's also a real number. It's a real number because we could see it on a graph. It's a rational number because you could write 7 as a fraction, and it's an integer. Is it complex? No. There's no I attached to it. And this is to help you recall if it's complex, real, imaginary. Again, most mathematicians, when you say an imaginary number, you assume it, to, well, you call it complex. Complex numbers could be I by itself, 
Well, no. I'm sorry. I was just simply just imaginary. It's not really complex. It's just imaginary. But complex has real and imaginary. Imaginary are just numbers just all by themselves. So in the previous piece, I contradicted myself saying that I by itself is complex, but in order for it to be complex, it has to have a real number to it. So it does not have a real number, but rule of thumb, anything with the I attached to it is complex. I by itself is just imaginary. So that's fine. And remember, I equals the square root of negative 1. We know we can't have a negative number. So we call it imaginary. All right, moving on. Imaginary numbers. We know that if we have a negative number, any negative number, it becomes imaginary. Like negative 5 is 5i. Five Negative to 4, because we know the square root of 4 is 2, it becomes 2i. Don't forget to apply your square and cube root knowledge. Alright? So, let's work a problem like so. 3 plus 2i minus one plus i. our problem. You solve just like any other distributive property problem. Take this negative sign, distribute it across. Negative one minus i. Three plus two i. And all thing you gotta do is just combine your terms. Three and negative one. So that gives me positive two. Two minus two i minus i is just positive i. That is how you do this problem. Alright, so let's move on to something else of that caliber. Alright, let's try this one for size. So, we got two factors, and we know we got to use distributive property or forward method. So, 2 times 1 is 2. 2 times negative i is negative 2i. i times 1, which is positive i. And then, i times negative i is negative i squared. Alright? Always, when you see this, this i squared, always remember i squared equals negative 1. Alright? So let's rewrite this. Now, this And the bet becomes negative one times negative one, which 
you know it's positive 1. So that's 2 minus 2i two plus i plus 1. Now combine your terms. Remember constants first. 2 plus 1 is 3. Okay. Negative 2 i plus i is negative i. That's how you solve that kind of problem. And yes, this is something you will see on ACT or for those who already took me before, I have seen it on ACT. Next, it's a problem dealing with the quadratic formula. So, I taught you how to factor. That part's true. Quadratic formula, I may just write this somewhere on the board for you. Because, I mean, A, I haven't really shown you too much of this, because this is more of an algebra 1 skill. But we could go through it. So remember, x equals the opposite of b plus or minus square root of b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. So from there, let's just start putting our pieces together. So 2 was b, but the opposite of 2 is negative 2. All right. Maybe I highlight this to kind of help you guys out. So two was B. I'm just highlighting this so you guys can see this. All right. So you know what what where. So I put on highlight all my B's so you can see it. All right. My A. is 3. Can you see me? And then my C is my positive 2 in the back. Oh, I was tripping with the A. Oh, no, I got it right. No, I was tripping. Because my A is supposed to be my orange. 2 is just part of the formula. So my A is actually in the orange. So that's 3. As I stated, was coloring earlier. Alright, so now you see why, how I put my letters together. Now we could keep it going. So there. Put my numbers in the correct places. Then I start simplifying stuff. And then from there, I got a negative number in the square root. I can never have a negative number in the square root. It could never ever happen. So from there, I simplified it, but how did I went from negative 20? to 2i5. Uh, well, remember, although I'm dealing with a negative number here, I still got to break this down as I have beforehand. So, 4 times 5. 4 is a perfect square. So guess what? Because 4 is a perfect square, it's of 2. And 5 isn't. And because I had a negative number, the negative, the negative which becomes I, I always go outside, never in. 
outside always. So on your ACT, you may be solving equations where you have to deal with imaginary stuff. So that is how I got 2, 5, 2 on the outside, the imaginary, the imaginary letter I next to it, and then 5 in the inside of the radical. All right. Okay, then from there, my final answer, how did I get all of that? How did I get negative 1 plus or minus i square root 5 over 3? Remember, I find the greatest common factor, GCF of negative 2, positive 2 is 6. And the greatest common factor of all those three numbers is just two. And therefore, how I got negative one. All right. Also, a point note to remember, if you was to put this in decimals and try to graph it, And how you know that this uh this is imaginary is it does not touch the x axis. It only touches the y axis. Remember, in order for something to be real, it has to touch the x axis. It has to touch the x axis. It it has to touch what? The x axis. Or for the solution to be real. In order for the solution to be real, it has to touch the x axis. In order for the solution to be real, it has to touch the x axis. In order for the solution to be real, it has to touch the x axis. Nice. So we can move on. On the ACT, let alone um, in it, you have to know how to solve equations. Now, you may not, oh, in the, before I continue, in chemistry, you guys have to solve equations. But in terms of ACT time, because you have nothing but 60 seconds for equation solving, just put these in decimals. The second one is hard because people tend not to draw the graph correctly. I mean, type in the function correctly. So go graph these and see what you get. For the first one, you should have gotten this function. And that means that your answer is x equals 6. Your x in a, your x intercept is 6. So that means this is also your 0 root and solution. All right, so let's, let's type in the second one. Now, again, be careful how you do it, because it's easy to get it wrong. Type it exactly as you see it. Type it exactly as you see it. So the second one should look like this. You shouldn't have gotten x equals 2. Again, x equals 2 is your answer to the equation. It's the 0. It's the root. Alright. So let's graph the last one. Again, careful how you graph it. And you should have 
two answers. One, your answer should be x equals 4.5. So make sure you move around, okay? So you may have to zoom out a little bit. You may have to move your graph around. The second one you should have gotten is x equals 4. You are right, indeed. So the first one is negative 4.5, not 4.5 negative. negative 4.5 and 4. And again, make sure that you zoom around so you can see two solutions. Alright, and again, you're looking for that x-intercept. When you solve these equations, you're looking for the x-intercept. When you solve these equations, you're looking for the x-intercept. When you are solving these equations, you are looking for the x in a cell. It's time for y'all to play a cool little Kahoot game. Right? Based on little stuff that we did. So, now this is the part where you really have to just recall facts. All right. I need some trade effects that you know. You should know that the unit circle comes from the equation of the circle x squared plus y squared equals r squared. The next thing you should have known that the r is the radius, and r always equals 1 for the unit circle. The coordinates of the unit circle is cosine sine, where x equals cosine and y equals sine. AB is the same as TH, the same as, as XY, and they all equals cosine sine. Just keep that in mind, alright? And these are just facts that they can never be denied. Cosine squared plus sine squared equals 1 equals x plus sine equals 1 or cosine. plus 1 equals 1, but it also could mean one of the other x plus sine squared theta equals 1. And that's x squared, so x squared plus sine squared theta equals 1. So it all mean the same. Graph with trig functions in decimals. Y'all pay attention to how how to do this, because this could easily, easily go wrong if you don't pay attention. All right, so go to decimals, graph, type in this function unless you see it. All right, then from there. I need for you to go to the screwdriver, the screwdriver on the top left side of the page. Alright? Once you are there, I need for you to do the following. You want to see a bunch of stuff, get to that x axis, and when you see the word step, 
type in P I and when you type in that letter type in those two letters you're gonna get the notation pi and when you see that notation pi your graph will look like this right just like that graph these functions for me You shall grab the looks like this. And remember, make sure your step is in pi. All right? Remember, sine graphs with the sine starts at zero. They go to zero. They look something like that. And then cosine. They actually touch at one. And then they go to negative one, and then they dip at F1. So just remember, cosine is at zero. I mean, sine is zero, cosine starts at one. That's from one. Y equals one for cosine. X to be zero. So keep those things in mind, all right, y'all? Keep them right there, right there to your heart. Ooh, sorry, that's gonna help you. Got five sine given that cosine it is five or thirteen. How will we solve a problem like this? You gotta know your trick ratios. And not only just that, well your trick ratios for sure. So cosine is Jason of the hypotenuse. Now we gotta find out what sine is. Sine is opposite of the hypotenuse. So let's go ahead and um, find the quadratic formula of this. At this point, it does not matter if you use a squared plus b squared equals c squared. It does not matter. We use a squared plus b squared equals c squared if you want to, or you could use x squared plus y squared equals r squared if you want to. That's not what you use, it's the same thing. But I'm going to use the second one. So, I know the hypotenuse is 13, right? I know that I have five square here. I know I have, I don't know what Y is. Again, it doesn't matter which formula you use. It does not matter if you put y squared plus 5 squared equals 13 squared. That does not matter. So. Equals one sixty nine 
But if I subtract 25 from both sides, I get y squared equals 144. If I square both sides, y equals 12. So I just found out. I just found things out. So now, if you want to, you could say five was the x that we found out. Now we know that y is the twelve. And we know this information. So now we know that sine is going to be twelve over thirteen. Again, I just did it slightly a bit more differently. I know it could have been a little difficult, but if you know the Pythagorean theorem, you got this down pat. And that's just me saying the answer twice. So you don't have to pay attention to that. If you need to, you could go back a little bit before I hit that button. All right, moving on. Reference stuff. So more so the unit circle still. Pause. Is power six? equals 5 power over 6. Think about reference angles. I'm going to teach you both the long and the short way of to answer this. So look, I know that power over 6 is 30 degrees. So anything with the bottom, it's going to be something of 30. But I'm asking you for the reference angle. So, suppose if I don't know how to convert 5 pi 6 into degrees. Well, you can. Just multiply by 180. And then when you multiply all that, you will get 150. So, it's true because because power of 6 is well you gotta say five power over six five power over six is a reference of power over six so that's the hard way of doing it The easy way of doing this is just saying, you see the 6 here and the 6 here? You could also just say true. Because both are reference. Radiant. Which is true because they have the same denominator. Anytime you see radians with the same denominator, there are radians to each radians to each other. Or reference to each other. 
reference radians. So here, are they both reference radians of each other? No. Because you say different denominators. Different denominators. The denominators have to be the same. And yeah, I do apologize about the hair rank. Because I know that the hair rank is a little hard. Because as I'm writing, my pen is messing up on me. But you hear my voice. And you hear me talking as I'm writing. So you can always repeat the stuff. Play no game with Papa Hoot. Enjoy yourselves on this one. Alright. Yeah, we're at the end. Homework. Simply just do session 8 of Nav Nation. Review unit circle. Review graph and trig functions. I may throw in a few codes there for you guys to practice.